out with the old, in with the new. That's what they say. But sometimes that's not so easy. Sometimes the old can be just fine. I'm being vague, so let me shoot it to you straight. If you have a water ionizer, don't think you need to get rid of it. There are some strategies that you can implement to ensure you're receiving adequate levels of hydrogen from your water ionizer. I'm going to walk you through those steps on this episode of H2 Minutes. So before I begin, I have a big announcement to make. Next month, my two YouTube channels, H2 Minutes and H2 Hub, is doing a giveaway. Through the month of November, we'll be partnering with a company that supports H2 Minutes to reward our loyal viewers with a chance to win a giveaway. There will be two awesome hydrogen products that we will be giving away, as well as some extra content for you to enjoy. We'll be giving away all the details very soon, so stay tuned. Don't forget to check out the description of this video for all the cool stuff that we have there for you. Okay, so on to the water ionizer tips. There are five things you need to do to make sure you're getting the most out of your water ionizer. And by getting the most out of your water ionizer, I mean getting the most dissolved hydrogen into the water. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, you might need to watch my last videos on the topic. In the truth about ionized water, I explain the history of ionized water and the real reason for the health benefits, which is, of course, hydrogen gas. And then in my last video, the problem with water ionizer, we went over limitations ionizers struggle with to dissolve hydrogen gas into the water. And of course, understanding hydrogen water discusses the importance of dissolving hydrogen gas into the water water so you can receive the health benefits. Okay, now that we got the background out the way, this video is for those who already have an ionizer and want to get or maintain the health benefits of their hydrogen water. You may be okay to continue to use it for hydrogen water if you follow these tips. Number one, test your water for H2. This is an imperative step. This is really the only way you can know how much dissolved hydrogen your ionizer is producing. Just because the system is producing hydrogen water with a bunch of visible bubbles does not mean it has detectable or measurable levels of dissolved H2. This is a big false assumption. So don't trust your eyes or the visible bubbles. Test the H2 concentration. We will put the link to buy H2 Blue in the description. We made a video teaching how to use H2 Blue here. To get the correct results with H2 Blue, there's a few tricks and tips you need to learn, and we explain those in that video. And before you ask, no, an ORP meter will not work or tell you the H2 concentration. I also did a video explaining ORP here. You need to verify if your ionizer is making a therapeutic concentration of dissolved hydrogen gas. You need to be at least 0.5 to 1 ppm, but in my opinion, it's better to be at 0.8 to 1 ppm or above while maintaining a pH of 9.5 or less. And you need to test it often, at least every two weeks to a month, depending on the maintenance. One good H2 reading does not mean it will continue to perform at that level. Before we move on, if you have an ionizer, go ahead and let me know in the comments your H2 Blue results. Number two, test your TDS. To do this, you will need to purchase a TDS meter like this one. I got mine on Amazon and I'll put a link to it in the comments. TDS stands for Total Dissolved Solids, and it references the minerals dissolved into the water. It is super important to know if you have soft or hard water. As I stated in this video, minerals in your source water are necessary for electrolysis to work in an ionizer. You will not be able to produce hydrogen efficiently without adequate minerals. So if you measure a very low level of dissolved H2 with H2 blue, the TDS meter may give you an insight as to why. Now, if you did test a normal level of dissolved H2, it is still important to test the TDS. It will help you know how often you need to clean your ionizer, whether weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly. One last tip is that you can look up your water supply water quality report online. This can also give you an insight into the specific levels of different minerals in your water. High calcium levels being the primary culprit or bad guy. Again, the importance of cleaning an ionizer is also explained in this video, but it's also my next point. Number three, clean your device regularly. 
This is very important to ensure the electrodes in your device are clean. Like we said in our last video, even a microscopic layer of scaling can inhibit hydrogen gas from dissolving into the water properly. There are a lot of ionizers with different technologies to keep them clean. So it's best to familiarize yourself with them and know what type you have. And every ionizer should have a way to manually clean it. So make sure you ask for this. Calcium scaling can build up anywhere the water touches, not just the water cell and cause a lot of issues. In fact, sometimes the calcium scaling can be so bad that the unit has to be sent in to the manufacturer for factory cleaning. And even then, if the calcification is too bad, you might not be able to recover or fully clean the unit, meaning your system may never be able to properly dissolve adequate levels of H2 into the water. If your ionizer does not have any anti-scaling technology, then it's a good idea to run the mildly acidic option for 10 to 30 seconds after using the drinking water setting. This will manually reverse the polarities of the electrodes, which will repel divalent ions such as calcium or other mineral compounds aiding to reduce scaling. Mineral ions such as calcium dissolve into water at an acidic pH, meaning lower than 7 pH, and they precipitate out of solution at an alkaline pH, meaning above 7 pH. So that is important to know to be able to stay on top of the scaling that may be happening in your ionizer. Number four, consume from the highest drinking water setting. It is best to consume the water on the highest drinking water setting with your ionizer. This setting will have the highest applied voltage and subsequent amps at the cell. This means it will have the highest H2 production. Unfortunately, water ionizers generally only dissolve approximately 10 to 30% of the hydrogen gas that is produced. This is why it's important to drink the water on the highest drinking water setting. It will give you the best chance to get the highest dissolved H2 concentration. Note, I am saying the highest drinking water setting for a reason. Some ionizers have a strong alkaline setting that uses an electrolysis enhancer. I would not recommend drinking any water from an ionizer that has been produced with an electrolysis enhancer. Stay tuned for our next episode as we're going to debunk some popular misconceptions about the other waters produced by an ionizer. It is also important to check the pH of any alkaline hydrogen water you drink from an ionizer. As I stated in my last video, drinking water above a 10 pH is not recommended. pH meters would be most helpful as well as it will be hard to discern the exact pH with the colorful pH drops. If your drinking water is above a 10 pH, I recommend using a couple drops of lemon juice to bring the pH down. Number five, find the sweet spot. All water ionizers will have a sweet spot of the dispensing flow rate that will dissolve the most hydrogen gas. This is where the dispensing flow rate of the water is not flowing too fast, which will not allow the H2 bubbles enough time to properly dissolve. And it's also not too slow which will allow for too much time and the H2 bubbles get too big and escape the water right away. You have to channel your inner scientist and do some tests with H2 Blue to really find it. Once you know, you'll be able to find that flow rate every time you drink water from your ionizer. So these are just a few tips that you can do to ensure you're getting good enough levels of dissolved hydrogen with your ionizer. The reason for this video is that just because ionizers are not ideal for producing dissolved hydrogen in your water, it can still be an adequate hydrogen water system if you know what you're doing. Plus, it is really a lot of money and we would never suggest to scrap it or try something new if you don't have the resources to do so. If this is you, it is our desire to teach you how to get adequate results with what you already have. Hydrogen is the goal here and we want to do whatever it takes to achieve that goal. Now, it's very possible you've tried all these things and you still are not getting good levels of H2. Trust me, I've been there. I wanna let you know that I'm available to help you troubleshoot and help you determine what the problem might be. You can email me at taiwan at hubcom and we can figure this thing out together. I can also help you acquire products that provide great levels of hydrogen that can work within your price range if you're interested. Stay tuned as we continue this series on water ionizers next month. As always, thank you to our community at Patreon for supporting us. We've made some changes to our Patreon. Now you can access most of the bonus content for just $5 a month. We would love to have you be a part of our community. Be sure to share this video and of course, like and subscribe. That was your sweet spot dose of H2 within minutes.